All right, we got us a new project here. It's a simple one, yet not simple. What I mean by that, it's a small project, uh, but a lot of planning and artistry is about to go into this mailbox right here. We have the customer here in Centerton, Arkansas. Beautiful home. And we have another beautiful home here, his neighbor. And uh, this mailbox was shoved, got touched, hit by a vehicle and uh, moved. And we received a call and uh, they want us to build them a custom mailbox. So as you can see, the existing mailbox is right here, uh, smaller than the one we're going to build them. I want to do a cantilever over and uh, give them a custom mailbox. They just kind of have a, had a square, a chopped limestone and brick mailbox. And so I'm going to make it a little bit better looking, actually a lot better looking and uh, more structurally sound. And so I took my hammer, that's what you want to do. You never know who has poured the concrete. Of course, they have been here, I think this house and mailbox has been here for like 13 years. And you can see this concrete has not settled, has not settled at all. But we're going to, since we're going to build this mailbox bigger and heavier, it doesn't hurt to uh, reinforce what is here. So we have snapped a, ch a chalk line here. As you can see, me and Isaac snapped a chalk line. And uh, I'm gonna cut this out. See, you can hear how hollow that sounds. And uh, I just don't trust it. You get back here, it's a little bit better sounding. And I have my foot on here and I can feel the vibrations with barely any tapping. I don't trust that slab. I do not trust that. Last thing I want is to build a new mailbox, nice and heavy and then a crack start to form through here and I get a call from the customer. So in order to prevent that, I'm gonna cut this whole section out and reinforce it with rebar and pour me a footer for my mailbox. And so those of you who know your Bibles, you understand about a sturdy foundation and how that is the most important part of uh, building anything, whether it's your life, uh, your spiritual life, hey, your physical life, and it applies to construction as well. We have to start here. It starts here. If this is not done right, then uh, catastrophe awaits. And so we're going to uh, build this correctly and to start out by uh, building it correctly, we're gonna have to cut this out and I'm going to pour me a beefy foundation so that I don't have any issues later on. And then I can focus on the aesthetics of this beautiful mailbox that we are about to build. All right, so what you have here is a sawed out section of concrete that we just did. And uh, as you can see, we are now busting these sections up to remove them. And it's a very good thing that we did because this footing that they had the previous mailbox on was bad. And if we were to build a heavy new mailbox on top of that, maybe it would last, maybe it wouldn't. The only thing that was holding this front end, the way this front end of the mailbox that they already had was this concrete section back there, which is a no-no because at any time, uh, any kind of impact or freeze thaw or whatever through the years, any kind of sinkage you need right here, uh, you could have a crack that forms back there. The weight of your, uh, the full weight of the structure that you're building has to have a solid foundation directly beneath it. It cannot be supported or uh, maintained by anything behind it or on the sides. It has to be directly beneath it. Focus on this piece right here. See that? It's cracking, and not only cracking, it's sinking, which means the dirt underneath or the base that they have underneath. I 
bet it's just dirt. I bet it's not a real base. I bet you real wire rebar. The base underneath is not compact, and there's some settling that has occurred. So what we're going to do is remove all of these, and then we are going to uh, pour our own rebar enforced uh, footer here to where this has full support underneath. Okay, we've got the footing existing slab uh, cut up here and uh, chunked up. And I just busted this with the uh, mini sledge right here. And as you can see, there's nothing but large rock concrete. There's your aggregate in there, which is great. The problem is these yahoos did not put any wire mesh through this thing and uh, no rebar. And so I say that and I use the word yahoo because it's, uh, it's appropriate. Folks, you don't want anyone building something on your property if it's not done correctly. This was not done correctly. You have to have reinforcement. You just don't come in here and pour. That's good enough, Isaac. We can't just, you can't just pour a slab like this and, and, and pour concrete, listen, over dirt. Look at that. That's dirt. They have a little bit of uh, substrate there, but that's dirt and then put a big old heavy mailbox on top of it. That's a no-no. So we're gonna do it the right way. Okay, the boys got this rebar tied in nice and tight. See, we can walk on that. Spend it about four inches up, about halfway, so we're good to go for the pour. Okay, we got our concrete poured, and uh, Eli is working the concrete as we speak, smoothing it out. Once this is done, once he's finished getting everything at the perfect slope that he wants and smoothed out, we will then stab our rebar that will attach and fashion to uh, attach and fasten the mailbox to this footer. Some people like a breakaway to where the mailbox moves if it gets hit. Others like uh, a mailbox that if it gets hit. Um, there's a chance that it can be repaired if it does get hit and uh, it won't move. Either or, if you plow into one of these mailboxes with your car, with your vehicle, car, or truck, uh, the mailbox will need to be replaced. So be careful when you drive around these things. We got the concrete poured and the rebar set, so we are good to go. All we need for a mailbox is four corner posts for our skeleton, our block. Of course, there'll be block in here too, but that's overkill for a mailbox. It's not load bearing. We just don't want this bad boy to go anywhere. So that's plenty enough rebar right there. Uh, it, this is overkill for a mailbox, but we overkill everything. We're American masonry arts and that's how we do it. So we have a full number four rebar grid underneath or in that concrete. And so this thing is structurally secure very proud of this. We're going to get to laying the skeleton tomorrow. We've got our cantilever started. Pyramid effect on a skeleton. Everything nice and tied in. I'm going to pyramid one inch back one more time to create the aesthetic that I want. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Yep. Just like that. Grandpa will be proud. Now, fur it. Till it'll stick. There you go. There you go. A little bit too much mud, but that's good for him. Yep. That's good. Now do the other side. Now do the other side. So you got so much on there, it's probably going to fall off now. Tilt your brick a little bit more, Bubba. No. Uh, use the base, your butt, hurry up. Use this part of your trowel right here. Go ahead, yeah. 
вот. Here's our pedestal. It is all ready. It is at the official height of 45 inches. The uh, technical height that it needs to be is anywhere from 41 to 45 inches from the road to the bottom of the mailbox, which is going to be right there. The top cap of the finished product will be somewhere up in here, but that is official mailbox height, and so we don't want to get in trouble with that. And so we're going to pack it up for the day and let this sit up and dry. I got our wall ties in there. I don't want to lay brick and wiggle those loose. I want those nice and tight for when we lay our brick. We'll lick and stick our real stone. We have some really nice, um, expensive actually, veneer stone, uh, cut stone. So uh, corner cuts and everything. This stuff right here. There's Isaac. He went and got us some white type in masonry. Let's see, this is real Texas white chopped limestone, and they actually saw cut this, and when they do that, the price of that stuff goes way up, but it's very convenient when you're doing projects like this. And so we have our pyramid effect going on here, and uh, this is our shell, what I like to call the skeleton, and it is ready to go. Uh, we'll show you the, the brick pattern and the stone pattern that we're going to put on this tomorrow. We started our shell today of veneer and it's looking pretty good. Pretty good. Got our pyramid effect going on. The uh, phone, at least from where I can see it, it's making it look like it's uh, out of level and whatnot, but it's not. We don't build things out of level, out of plumb. So it's coming together. Got us a inset recess course of roll off right there. Yep, so basically we're finishing up our post right here. We're about ready to set our mailboxes. And uh, we're finishing up the left in here of our chopped limestone face cut. These are veneer cuts right here. And so you just want to tip your stone, form it after you've got it, kind of wrap your edges sometimes to remove any marks or anything like that. You've got to be really careful with your limestone because this stuff is chalky and it's brittle and it breaks very easily. Very soft. Of this stone. 